I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about calculus and polar coordinates. In problem number 29, we'd like to find the area of the region outside the circle r equals 1 half and inside the circle r equals cosine of theta. So before we start trying to actually figure this out, let's just draw a picture and look at the region that we're trying to find the area of. All right, so um, here's my x and y axis. r equals 1 half is just a circle of radius 1 half. So um, here's a circle. Its radius is 1 half. All right, and r equals cosine of theta is a circle also of radius one half. It has diameter one and it's tangent to the y-axis. So it's sitting over here on the x-axis tangent to the y-axis. So it would look something like something like this. All right, so we've got two circles here, each has radius one half, and I want it to be outside of the first circle and inside of the second circle. So what we're talking about here is this crescent-shaped region sitting over here on the right. So now the question is, all right, uh, how do I find the area just in that crescent-shaped region. And I can think of it this way. If I draw a ray starting at the origin that goes out through both of these, I notice that one of the functions is the outside function and one of the functions is the inside function. Or you could think of it as this is the top function and this is the bottom function. So really all that we're doing here is we're finding the area between two polar curves. Now the question is, well, what am I integrating from and what am I integrating to? I notice that this is a symmetric region. So what would really be nice is if I could just find out what this angle is where these two intersect, then I could just integrate from zero to that angle and then double it because of my symmetry. So why don't I do that? So when is 1 half equal to cosine of theta? So if I said that 1 half was cosine of theta, well, what theta gets the job done there? Well, uh, I believe cosine of pi over 3 would get the job done here. So this is pi over 3. So cosine of pi over 3 is a half, and we have our angle here. All right, so what that tells me is when I integrate this thing, I want to integrate from 0 to pi over 3 and then double it. Let's start setting up my integral. So my area is going to be, I'm going to double this, because I'm just going to integrate the top half of that crescent shape and then get the bottom half by doubling that value. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to double the integral from um, 0 to pi over 3 of 1 half times the outside function squared minus the inside function squared. So the outside function in this case is the function r equals cosine of theta. So I get that cosine of theta quantity squared minus that inner function, but the inner function in this case is a half, one half squared, all of that d theta. So this is the integral that will get the job done for me. Now let's actually compute it. So I have a 2, I have a 1 half, those cancel. And I'm left with the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of cosine squared theta minus 1 fourth. 
d theta. All right, let's replace the cosine squared of theta with its half angle identity. Uh, and we will rewrite this as the integral from zero to pi over three of one plus cosine of two theta over two minus one fourth, all of that d theta. All right, so uh, this thing breaks down into two fractions. I could write this as a half plus cosine of two theta over two but I, then I have one half minus one fourth. One half minus one fourth is positive one fourth. So let's rewrite this one more time, uh, a little cleaner. So I have integral from zero to pi over three of, now we have one fourth plus cosine of two theta over two, all of that d theta. All right, let's move over here. And we have, let's take an antiderivative. This would be one fourth theta plus sine of two theta divided by four all of that evaluated from zero to pi over three. So let's start out by plugging in pi over three. If I plug in pi over three for theta, I get pi over 12. So pi over 12. Uh, if I plug in pi over three for theta here, I get two pi over three. Sine of two pi over three would be root three over two. Uh, so I get root three over two divided by four. So this is root three over two divided by four would be root three over eight. Okay, so I plug in pi over three here, I get pi over 12. I plug in pi over three here, I get root three over eight. Then I subtract plugging in the zero. I plug in zero here, I get zero. I plug in zero here, I get sine of zero over four, which is also zero. And I'm left with pi over 12 plus root three over eight. And that is going to be the area of that little crescent shape that I started with.